Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Today we're taking a look at the Joya Lens JL249MS 3 Lens Digital Microscope. Now before I get into the content, I need to let you know this video is sponsored by Joya Lens, who sent me this digital microscope for review. I'll have an affiliate link in the description if you'd like to buy one for yourself. If you use my affiliate link, the channel will get a small commission that's paid by Joya Lens. Doesn't cost you anything extra. With that out of the way, let's take a look at what's in the box. When Joya Lens contacted me and asked me to take a look at their digital microscope, I was actually very excited to do that because I've looked at digital microscopes on more than one occasion. I've been tempted several times to get one because as we get older, we wear these glasses and when we're working on these little tiny electronics, it can be challenging to say the least. So these digital microscopes, the nice thing about them is they come with these big LCD screens and they allow you to see small devices up close, very up close on a big screen. To start out with, we've got a components list right up top, the monitor, the base, the beam, a couple of screws and a column, and the assembly steps all mapped out with exploded views. So it looks like everything you need to get this digital microscope up and going. So very simple little component list. And then here's a user manual explaining operations of the device, including specifications, maintenance, what's in the box, and how to choose your lens and so on. So the manual looks effective. I don't really see any issues there. It's also got a little remote control. Check that out to manage the screen. Now we'll get inside the box and you're greeted immediately with the monitor. So the Joya lens screen right here, 10 inch monitor and the camera is already built on the back and it looks like these little screws hold the different lenses in. So you unscrew these screws and then the lens pops off and you can put a different lens on. And there's also an SD card slot there on the bottom. I'm not sure if the camera's gonna pick that up or not, but an SD card slot there and an HDMI out. And it looks like a USB micro in for power. So the monitor is powered by USB. And there we go, there's a look at the monitor. Next up, we've got an HDMI cable that looks like a mini HDMI to standard HDMI. And that'll be used for output probably to another device like a TV screen or a bigger monitor. It did say that in the book. We'll definitely be checking that out because I wanna find out if I can take images and video off the monitor and feed them in digitally into the computer for use in videos. I think that'd be really cool. Next, there's a little remote control. Looks like a power button and a brightness button that will plug into the monitor, I'm guessing. So the USB power source and then the monitor. Here's the little remote control to control. Probably the camera has got some plus minus, some brightness buttons and probably a snapshot button. Yeah, the red button up there is for taking a snapshot or a video. Here's the USB power brick. And this one says it's got an input of 100 to 240 volts and it outputs five volts at two amps. So standard USB power brick, USB A. Next up are the lenses and inside the box, we've got the L lens, which has got an object distance of 900 to 300 millimeters. And then we've got the D lens, which has an object distance of four to five millimeters. So that's a very up close lens. And then there's already one lens on the device. And this one has an object distance of 12 to 320 millimeters. Next up is the slide holder, and this has got a light on the bottom, and then there's a little connector right there that uses that pigtail we covered a little bit earlier for power. That's gonna plug in right there, and that'll provide backlight to your slides if you're looking at biological content or you know really microscopic stuff. That's what that's for, that's the backlight. And we've also got a little bug box. So I guess if you wanna look at bugs, there you go. Little case to look at bugs, the bug box. And this was a nice little surprise. Inside this box are a couple of slides. So if you don't have a microscope handy and you need some slides, they include some in the kit. There's a set of tweezers and a couple of clamp screws for the base plate to hold your material down on the base plate. So I was actually surprised they included some slides. Very nice touch. There's another USB cable. This one's a micro USB with a 90 degree bend. So this one also probably for power. Here's the column that will hold the camera to the base and you've got a locking nut on the back that's a metal knurled nut and that allows you to adjust the height of the camera. So all the knurled knobs are metal and the base is aluminum. Looks like it's well done. I don't really see like any manufacturing issues. It looks like it's well put together. So nice, nice part. And finally we have the base. So a couple of LED lights to illuminate your work, which would be really good for the camera to help pick up objects that you're checking out on your plate. 
And then there's the plate itself with a couple of holes for those clamps I mentioned earlier. Next up, we'll cover specifications and we'll put it together and give it a try. In terms of specifications, the video resolution is UHD at 2880 by 2160, which is 4K. That's 24 frames per second, which in this application should be just fine. It also supports 1080p at 60 frames per second and 30 frames per second and 720p at 120 frames per second. The video format is MP4, sounds good. The max frame rate is 120 frames per second. Regarding the lens types, there are three lenses that come with the kit. Lens A, Lens D, and Lens L. Lens A provides 18 to 720 times zoom. Lens D is 1800 to 2040 times zoom. And Lens L is 60 to 240 times zoom. The working distance for A is 12 millimeters to 320 millimeters. For lens D, it's four to five millimeters, and for lens L, 90 to 300 millimeters. The photo resolution is 24 megapixels, very nice, 5600 by 4200. The photo format is JPG, and it supports a micro SD card. Now, in the instructions, it says the micro SD card is not included. On the website description, it says it is included, so I'm not sure. I did not see it in the packaging, so I'm gonna go with not included. If I stumble into it during the assembly, I'll let you know. The power supply, as we've already talked about, is a five volt, two amp, standard power brick. And then the stand size is 20 centimeters by 18 by 33. All right, let's put it together. I'm gonna to use the assembly step guide that was included in the box because I've never put together a digital microscope. So if you know me at all, you know it's unusual that I read instructions. So the first thing we'll do is assemble the column to the base plate. After installing my column, I noticed that there was a little bit of an angle here, but you can't adjust it. You just gotta put a little leverage on there and you can get that to adjust. So there we go, now the column is straight up and down. All right, step two says to install the beam on top of the column, so we'll do that next. Next up is the monitor and it says lens L is for electronics and this one's got lens A installed. So I'm gonna take lens A off and I'm gonna install the one for electronics. So I'll just take these two screws off. Now that we've got our camera removed, the next thing we'll do is drop the monitor in the beam. And we'll do that by loosening these two grub screws on the side. And then I also wanna point out that this beam is keyed. So there's a notch there and a tab here on the monitor mount and they key in together. So just go ahead and slide that monitor down into the beam. Look for that notch to line up, there we go. And then once that's done, you can just Gently tighten these grub screws. You don't need a lot here. There's no real reason to wrench those down. I would not wrench those down very hard because they're going into plastic. And then you can make adjustments to the angle, the viewing angle by loosening this knurled nut and you can raise it and lower it. And then once you get the monitor where you're happy with it, just give that a little bit of a twist and you're all set. Next, we'll reinsert the lens. And because I'll be doing electronics work, I'm gonna use lens L, which has got an object distance of 90 to 300 millimeters. And we'll simply do that by popping the lens in the bottom right here. And then once that's in, we'll use the knurled nuts that were holding the original lens and we'll screw those into place. Then the last thing to do is install the little clips. So you put the screw in through the top and then the spring on the bottom. And then there's a couple of holes right on the base plate that these screw into. So we'll just set those down and screw them in. Let the springs do their job. All right, I got my USB brick and I've got the dimmer control. So I'll plug the USB A into the brick like that. And we'll just plug that into the wall and then we'll plug the dimmer control into the monitor itself. And remember, the barrel connector is for the slide tray. So if you need to use that, you just plug that in like that. The barrel connector also supplies power to the spotlights if you wanna use those. So plug in your barrel connector right there and that will turn on your spotlights. I did wind up finding the 32 gig SD card. It looks like a generic one, it's a class one, but I'll drop that in the back of the monitor and hopefully we'll be able to take some pictures and video. All right, it's time to fire it up. With our wires connected to our digital microscope, we can press the power button and you can see that turns on our spotlights. It will also turn on the monitor. And then with the monitor, after the little welcome screen, we can take our sample and drop it right there underneath the lens. And I'll admit to pre-focusing this a little bit. 
So you mechanically set your monitor where you want it by adjusting the height and get your camera basically where you want it physically to be. And then once you've got that worked out, you can use this little focus tube right here. It's just below the monitor and you can twist that to get the focus in the image nice and sharp on the screen. Took me a little bit of time to find that, but once I did, we were good to go. And that looks like a very nice crisp image. You can see I've got EPW6, 2.4 gigahertz version one. And let's check out my soldering job. You guys are about to see a reveal. Let's see how good John soldered this one together. So I don't know what it's gonna look like. I hope I, didn't, I hope I did a good job. And that looks a little out of focus to me, so I'll make a minor adjustment. There we go. There we go. It's a little higher, right? Because it's not flush against the plate. That looks pretty good, not bad. It looks like number five there could be improved on. That one right there, that needs maybe a little bit of work, but that's not too bad. Pretty nice work. And no, I did not cherry pick. <laughs> this is just right out of my stash. It's what I had left. I gotta tell you, I like that. Boy, if you're doing fine electronics work, that is just ridiculously handy to have to see if you've got any traces that are crossed over, if you've got any short circuits, if you're looking for damage on your circuit board, that's a pretty cool way to look for it. Um, I know these little antenna connectors can be problematic, the IPX connector there. So if that's a problem, you can turn it on its side and again, just your focus a little bit. It doesn't autofocus. So we adjust the focus a little bit. We can make sure our antenna's got a nice clamping interface on the receiver. But yeah, that is pretty cool. You do have to adjust the focus. It's not an autofocus. If you're used to your iPhone camera or your smartphone camera, that might get a little annoying to you, but I'm making YouTube videos all the time. I'm constantly messing with focus. So there we go. There's a look at the boot button. Yeah, I kind of like that, man. That's neat. Now let's take a look at another receiver just for the heck of it. We'll drop that one on there and I'm gonna rearrange the camera so you guys can get a better look at what I'm seeing on the screen. I also wanna mention if you press the OK button right here on the monitor, that'll start recording the video. So I'll make sure to include some of this video in post-production so you can see what comes off of the monitor itself. So here's another receiver. This is a little EP1. And again, we can check John's soldering work. This is a reveal live. I'm showing you guys how my soldering looks on the boards. Man, it's really nice to be able to see that close. Look at the detail right there on that wire. That is super, super cool. And check this out. I would have never caught that with the naked eye. Look at those elements on the board right there that are not straight. That's not straight. That's not straight. That's not, these are even touching. You, you wouldn't see that with a naked eye. At least I couldn't see that with a naked eye. I can tell you that. Boy, I'll tell you what, this is kind of interesting to me because this is something you can use to check out electronics before you put them on your expensive plane. Just take a minute and look it over. I'm gonna tell you right now, seeing that little disaster, I would not put this on my airplane. I wouldn't do it. Interesting, and I don't even know what's going on over here. That looks like it's off too. That does not look correct. Huh, I'll be darned. And that's not anywhere near where I did solder work. So don't say it was my fault for getting the part, part too hot. Here's more, look at that, look at that. Those two are a little crooked. This, it's almost like this thing needs to be reflowed. Interesting, interesting, interesting stuff. That wraps up my first look at the Joya Lens JL249MS-3. Three lenses on this one. I kinda like the electronics capability this gives me because for my radio control models, I now have the ability to take a look at a real close level what's going on on the boards that I'm installing in my models. So I can see if my solder work, is done correctly and if I've got the right kind of connections and flow and I can take a look at the pre-installed elements just to make sure everything looks okay before I put it on the plane. I like that a lot. I think that's a very useful capability to have in the hobby. I'd like to say thanks to Joy Lens for sending this digital microscope out for review. I'll remind you if you'd like to pick one up for yourself, I have affiliate links in the description. If you like this kind of content, make sure you smash that thumbs up button, subscribe and hit the bell so you know when new videos hit the channel. YouTube should recommend another video for you right now. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy and go fly something.